a lot. I mean, for anyone who's read the Quran, you will see it is replete with words like Al-Quran, Al-Kitab, Ahsan Al-Hadith. These are terms which relate to the Quran and how we understand the Quran. And the first verse I have there, chapter 54, Qamar, verses 4 to 5, which talk about uh, uh, the Naba or the, the news of the prophets, they contain far-reaching wisdom, Hikmatu Baliha, which means its wisdom is comprises the entirety of the human condition. That is what its stories are meant to represent. Chapter 17, verse 9, it says, Indeed, this Quran guides to that which is most established and gives good tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds and that they will have great reward. So, once again, the Quran, it guides to something which you can apply. It's not guiding to some theoretical information, historical information, or religious genealogies, which is pointless for us in today's life. Can the Quran be understood? So, <coughs> to understand, for us to see if the Quran can be understood, let's have a look at George Sale's translation. Firstly, let me introduce you to Mr. Sale. Mr. Sale lived about 280 years ago, in the 1700s, uh, and he made no bones about the fact that he did not like Islam. He didn't like it. He, he's not like uh, some modern scholars who are more apologetic, more diplomatic in their, in their tone. He was not... Uh, he was not of, uh, of that variety. And in his translation, this is chapter eight, 2 verse 83. Uh, he says, Remember also when we accepted the covenant of the children of Israel, saying, You shall not worship other than uh, except God, and you shall show kindness to your parents, etc., etc. Let's just observe this for now. Can this said, be said to be unclear? Perhaps not. I mean, you can see that it talks about worship, and it talks about showing kindness. Let's look at corroborating verses. Serve God and associate no creature with him. I'm still using sales translation. And show kindness uh, to parents, relations, orphans, etc. Same thing, being repeated. And again, say, come, I will rehearse to which your Lord has forbidden you. That is to say, you be not guilty of adultery and show kindness to your parents. Again, this translation is giving you that same idea, albeit in a different phraseology. Thy Lord commanded that you worship none besides him, and that you show kindness to your parents. Chapter 17, verse 23. So from here you can see, even with a translation which does not pretend to be objective, you can still get an idea of what it's trying to say. What does this example show us? While, while grasping the full meaning may be difficult, and indeed, I, I admit, if you look at chapter 2, verse 83, which, which I quoted earlier, and you wish to understand it in full, Mr. Sale's translation is not ideal. Uh, for example, the word ibadah, which means, um, which he translates to mean worship, can be understood to mean serve as well. Uh, the word which he says, kindness, ihsan, has a deeper significance of being husna, which is uh, something of goodness, beauty, balance. You see, so there is a deeper etymology involved. But, yes, while we can't understand the full meaning, even these translations can work to an extent. So we can understand the Quran even with uh, an unobjective translation. By observing repetition of ideas, the Quran helps us to receive the message. So once again, we are, we are looking at a translation which, as I said, is not objective. Yet, because of the repetition, it's being hammered into our minds as we read. So, the Quran will not be said to be unclear, even in translation. And last but not least, by observing the arrangement of phrases, the Quran helps us understand the relationship of ideas. So the Quran says, do not worship except God, and to your parents be good. And it repeats this four times. So for someone who reads this, you will see an intimate connection between worshipping Allah and doing good to your parents, and to the orphans, and to the poor, uh, the Ibn Sabil, the, the travellers, the Qurbah, the ones who are close, so what does this tell you? It tells you that when God talks about ibadah, he puts ihsan or doing good or being kind very closely to that idea. Even a translation cannot mask, mask this.
obviously biased translation, the Quran is clear. The idea though is to maximize clarity. How do we maximize clarity? There are always deeper me meanings to explore. Uh, I've personally uh, been engaging with this uh, approach for a number of years and uh, by talking to people, by researching into words, I've always seen that there's a possibility for the Quran to deepen uh, the meanings of certain verses. Uh, chapter 18, verse 109 says, Say, if the seas were ink for the words of my Lord, the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord were exhausted. Even if we brought something like it as a supplement. In other words, the meanings of the Quran, the, the depth of the Quran is inexhaustible. And the Quran enjoins you to, to, to do not hasten with the Quran before its revelation is completed to you and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Please note that there is no condition for this verse. So in other words, at no point can you say, I, I, have, I have enough knowledge now, therefore I've understood the Quran. No, this verse always applies to us. It even applied to the Prophet. So the Prophet himself was also seeking knowledge to understand the Quran. However, we can make our reading more lucid. We can get a deeper understanding by following the Quran's own instructions. And this, this is something which I, I think uh, we need to, to understand, that the Quran has a comprehensive internal system of explaining itself. So it's not like, okay, well, the Quran was revealed 1,500 years ago, therefore, you know, it's really difficult to understand now. You know, we need to go back to its uh, cultural context and so on. I completely reject those notions. The Quran can be understood by understanding its totality. And if we follow these internal systems, we will acquire the right meanings. Uh, the, however, the, there is a, a, a caveat here. This illumination is subjective. In other words, when you read it, you are illuminated. You, you have you probably found a new idea. Do not expect this idea to become authoritative. Your job is not to become someone's interpreter. Let someone else interpret for himself. You can share notes if you want.